Throughout her life, Brooke Shields has been in the public eye, and she had to deal with numerous controversies and scandals. Let's uncover how she became a sexualized young girl to a woman discovering her power. Pretty Baby On May 31, 1965, Brooke Krista Shields, the daughter of actor and model Terry Shields and businessman Francis Alexander Shields, was born in Manhattan, New York. They were both deeply in love with each other, but when Terry was pregnant with Brooke, Francis's family offered money to end the pregnancy. Terry accepted the money but broke the deal and gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Only five days after giving birth to Brooke, she wished to raise her well in order to achieve a career in show business. This wish blinded her to achieve a desperate dream as 10 months later, Brooke had already begun her modeling career. The first job she had was for Ivory Soap, where Francesco Scavello captured her picture. With the help of model agency Eileen Ford, she continued to be a successful child model. According to her Lifetime biography, Eileen developed her children's section just for Brooke. Still, her mother was not content with her career back then. Even though it's already a huge achievement to be a model in her young age, her mother pushed her for more. Growing up, she had to learn ballet, piano, and horseback riding. When Brooke was 12 years old, a lead role was offered to her, one that would change her life forever. The role centered on a 12-year-old girl who was being raised by her prostitute mother at a brothel in the Storyville Red Light area of New Orleans in 1917. Mail and Platt, the film's screenwriters, claimed that her audition for Pretty Baby consisted of a deep talk in which they primarily questioned her about her personal life. Mail and Platt also asked Brooke whether she knew what prostitution was to make sure she was mentally capable of navigating the issue. Her mother had explained what prostitution means to Brooke, especially since she had grown up in New York City and seen working prostitutes in Times Square. Despite the movie receiving mostly favorable feedback from critics, there was a lot of controversy surrounding it since it included child sexual exploitation and Brooke, who was 12 at the time of production, was nude on screen. As a result, it was swiftly given an R rating in the US, an X classification in the UK, and an outright prohibition in Canada. The media dubbed it as child porn and Brooke as the next Lolita. Astoundingly, Brooke admitted she did not feel any discomfort or shame during the movie's nude scenes, but she does recall attempting to avoid seeming as though she had just sucked on a lemon before her on-screen kiss with Keith Carradine, 29. However, she did acknowledge that the challenging production conditions were to blame problematic. Including the 12 to 15 hour days, the requirement for authenticity that led her to wearing antique shoes that cut her feet and co-star Susan Sarandon's insistence that a slap scene could not be faked by repeatedly hitting her in the face for nine takes. Two years later, 14-year-old Brooke held the record for being the youngest fashion model to ever grace a Vogue cover. In that same year, she became the face for Calvin Klein. She appeared in numerous controversial print and TV ads with the brand. The TV commercial featured her uttering the well-known tagline, you want to know what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. Brooke didn't immediately understand the catchphrase's secret meaning, but it was shortly outlawed by ABC and CBS and denounced as child pornography. She can only recall how she was admiring the creative puns in the Calvin Klein ads that played on the word jeans, prompting her to memorize a minute-long description of gene theory and explain Darwin's survival of the fittest concept. The following year, she is caught up in another problematic film. She was casted in Blue Lagoon. The film tells the story of two young kids who are shipwrecked on a lush tropical island in the South Pacific. Without any adult supervision, they started to explore and fell in love with each other. With the movie's theme, they added nude scenes for Brooke's role. The film's 32-year-old stunt coordinator, Kathy Trout, handled all of her naked scenes while many of Brooke's topless acts had her hair being stuck to her breasts. Fans thought she was only sexualized on screen, but 30 years later, Brooke revealed how a Hollywood executive sexually assaulted her. Brooke was only in her 20s when she was invited to a business dinner with hidden intentions. She thought she was going to be booked for a movie, but she was tricked into talking about it in the executive's hotel room. She recalls the traumatizing experience as something that she could never share before because no one would believe her. Directors, producers, and screenwriters who had the last say on these choices are all too responsible for the controversial movies and television commercials she appeared in. Adding to her recent confession, Hollywood's power 
powerful executives are also to blame. Most importantly, her mother, who was the brain of her career. Evil mother. Did you know that Brooke was only 10 years old when photographer Gary Gross took photos of her posing nude in a bathtub in 1975? Although it had been stated that the images weren't intended to be erotic in nature, Gary Gross was apparently paid $450 to shoot a prepubescent Brooke in the nude. Unexpectedly, her mother Terry supported the shoot since she had always wished for her daughter to become a famous star. As you can recall, her desire to put Brooke in show business flamed up just five days after she was born. This drove her to agree with the photo shoot. Brooke wore heavy eye makeup and her body was covered in oil. She was told to take pictures while sitting and standing in a bathtub. Two naked pictures of her 10-year-old body were included in the 1976 Playboy edition, one covering a two-page spread. Less than a year later, Brooke's mother sued Gary in court for $1 million in damages related to the nude photos of Brooke after realizing Brooke's celebrity image was rising due to her prominence on Blue Lagoon. When the images were shot in 1975, she had granted Gary all ownership rights. But Terry claimed that Gross shouldn't have been allowed to keep selling the photographs because they could seriously damage her daughter's career. However, the New York State Supreme Court rejected the case, with Justice Edward Greenfield believing that the images were not erotic. Terry was criticized by the judge for suing over the images while letting Brooke star in pornographic movies. Additionally, he accused Terry of trying to create an exciting and provocative sexual picture of Brooke while still protecting her innocence and living through her kid. In fact, because she was so preoccupied with overseeing her daughter's work, her mother had little interest in dating men. Brooke claimed that when she was a child star, her mother appeared next to her in order to protect her. With Terry being a single parent who develops an obsession with her daughter, she also became alcoholic. She remembered how her mother used to warn her that no one is going to have her. Brooke confessed that her mother was weirdly in love with her and her defense was always covered up by ownership and fear. Surprisingly, she admits that she doesn't have any resentment for Terry. Even after her death more than 10 years ago, Brooke still feels the need to guard her. Instead of condemning her own mother, she chooses to focus on the valuable lessons that her mother's parenting approach had taught her. Brooke as a mom. Now, Brooke has made it her mission to prevent her children from going through what she did. She has made a lot of effort to shield children from the enormous expectations that come with being well-known and to instill in them self-love. Brooke was quite cautious to let her youngest daughter work behind the camera, particularly when she expressed a desire to follow in her footsteps and become a model as well. She constantly reminds them that social media is fake. She keeps bringing up how false social media is. Additionally, she is more approachable and encouraging when having body image discussions with her girls. Now what? There is no doubt that Brooke will continue to get attention as a Hollywood star for many more years to come, as she was able to continue working successfully for more than 50 years. Even taking a pause, she decided to put her studies above fame in Hollywood. Her thesis even includes the awareness of her journey to the industry's exploitative themes. Despite the difficulties in her personal life, Brooke has persevered and shown determination. She is an advocate for mental health concerns and has utilized her position to spread the word about how crucial it is to get assistance when dealing with mental health problems. In fact, she serves as the spokesperson for Tupperware's Chain of Confidence Smart Girls Initiative, which encourages girls to take care of both their physical and emotional health. Brooke also supports a number of charitable organizations, such as the American Cancer Society and the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. Now she has launched a podcast called Now What?, which encourages people to move forward against any obstacles they may face in life. With this, Brooke Shields truly became the powerful woman her younger self would want her to be.